Number one gives us three different trig functions and it wants us to determine what the amplitude and the midline are. So the amplitude is the number multiplied out front of your trig function. So if we were to just do a general trig function down here, so if we had something like this, or the cosine function, your amplitude would be the number that's multiplied out front of these. So in this one, the amplitude is two. So two times the sine function. In part B, there isn't a number showing here, it's really a one, since one times cosine would be the same as just cosine, so the amplitude is one. And in C, it would be 1.4. Then the midline is a number added or subtracted to the end of the function, often called K when we write it generically. Um, so in this case, your midline is zero because there's nothing added at the end, so plus zero. In part B, your midline is negative five, and we actually should probably write these as equations. Um, so they're horizontal lines. So the midline would be y equals zero in the first one, y equals negative five in the second one. And then the midline for this final one is plus 3.5. So y equals 3.5. Number two gives us a graph of two sine theta minus three, and they want us to show the midline on the actual graph. So remember the midline comes from this negative three, and it's a um, horizontal line at y equals negative three. And then use the graph to find the amplitude. So remember the amplitude is how high the graph is from the midline. So how far is the max and the min from um, that midline? And it really from the function comes right here from that two. And then you can also see it on the graph. And so it would be two here as well. So the distance from this blue line to each peak is two units. Number three, select all trig functions with an amplitude of three. So remember, amplitude is the number multiplied in front of the function. So in number or in letter A, the amplitude is definitely three. B is not because the amplitude is one here. C has three times cosine, so that has an amplitude of three. D is one times cosine, so that does not. E is three times sine, so that has an amplitude of three. And then F is one times cosine, so that does not have an amplitude of three. Number four, the center of a windmill is 20 feet off the ground and the blades are 10 feet long. Fill out the table representing the vertical position of the windmill after it's being rotated through each of these given angles. And then we're gonna write an equation for the function of it. So. Off to the side here, I just kind of want to think about this part. So it's 20, the, the blade is, uh, or sorry, the center is 20 feet off the ground. So I like to just off to the side indicate all these different things. So this kind of middle of your graph right here is at 20. The blades are 10 feet long. So that means that when the blade goes directly to the top, this distance is going to be 10 units from the center, 10 feet from the center. So that means the top of this um, windmill is at 30 feet, and it means the bottom is at 10 feet off the ground. And then we have the ground here at zero. But so the very bottom of the windmill is at 10 feet, center is at 20, and top is at 30. So then we wanna come up with some of these different measures here. Um, and so where is this point gonna be at pi over six, at pi over three, at pi over two, at pi, and at three pi over two? So a couple of these are easier than the others. So at pi over two, so that's right here, at pi over two, it's directly at the top. So at pi over two, it's gonna be at 30 feet. At pi, 
So pi units is right here. It's going to be directly on the edge here, but in line with the center. So that means it's going to be at 20 feet. And then at 3 pi over 2, it's going to be here at the very bottom of the windmill, so at 10 feet. So then figuring out these other two angles here, so figuring out the pi over 6 angle and then the pi over 3 angle, we need to use the unit circle. And I'm actually going to write the equation of the um, height and use that to, to help me a bit here. So when we write the equation, okay, our function of the height of our windmill after an angle of theta, um, remember that height is the sine of a function, so the y value or the sine of a function. In this case, it's going to be extended by 10 feet from our unit circle, since our unit circle has a measure of 1 foot, and this, has, this circle has a measure of 10 feet. So we'll be doing 10 times the sign on our unit circle. Um, and then it's 20 feet. Its starting position is 20 feet high. So then this will be the function that gives us um, the actual height here. So at pi over 6 on our unit circle, this is the, um, whoops, this is the ordered pair at pi over 6. It's square root 3 over 2, 1 half. So when we go to figure out the height, we're using this y value. So we're doing 10 times a half and then plus 20. So 10 times a half is 5 plus 20 is 25 feet. And then for um, pi over 3, so now when I move this, and maybe I'll just duplicate this. I can leave that other one on there. So at pi over 6, our um, unit circle value here is one half square root three over two. And you may have decimals for that as well. So remember that the decimal of square root three over two is about 8.86, six. Um, and so then we're doing 10 times that Y value, right? So 10 times 0.866, I'm just gonna use the decimal, and then plus 20. So 10 times 0.86 is 8.6 plus 20 is 28.6 feet. So not quite to the height of 30, okay, but at 28.6 feet. Number five, the measure of an angle in radians satisfies this equation that the sine of theta is less than zero, so meaning a negative number. If theta is between 0 and 2 pi, what could you say about theta? So if we're looking at our um, kind of coordinate system, right, and you think about the unit circle, um, sine, remember, is the y values, or it goes in line with your y values, right? So your y values, so here's your y-axis, so your y values are positive up here and they're negative down here. So sine would be negative on all of these values or all of these angles on the unit circle. This angle is pi, so there's pi, and then back to 2 pi. So we would know that theta is going to be somewhere between pi and 2 pi. So if it's negative, it's down here. That's between the measures of pi and 2 pi. Number six, which rotations with center O take P to Q? Okay, and remember you can rotate this as many times as you want. So then let's, and we're going, whoops, let me get a color here. And we're going to go um, counterclockwise is the way that our angles go when they're positive. So if we're taking a look at this A, it's 3 pi over 4. So here's 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, here's 3 pi over 4. So this one would not get us there. 15 pi over 4. So remember, pi would be 4 pi over 4. 5, 6, 7, 8 pi over 4. 9, 10, 11, 12 pi over 4. 13, 14, 15 pi over 4. So this one is good. 
because remember, this is zero, this is pi. Well, pi could be written as four pi over four as well. Okay, or it could also, so then when I'm counting, then five, six, I'm just counting each of the fourths, and then you get to eight pi over four, nine, 10, 11. This would also be 12 pi over four. It's just two rotations. Um, so then let's take a look at C. So C is seven pi over four. So here we're at one, two, three, four, five pi over four, six pi over four, seven pi over four. So seven pi over four is also good. That's just hasn't made it a full rotation, right? Versus the green one went a second rotation around. Um, D is 11 pi over four. So we're at four, eight, nine, 10, 11 pi over four. So that one is not at Q. And then this final one is um, 23 pi over four. So here we're at eight pi over four. Another rotation would be 16 pi over four. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23 pi over four would also set us on Q. Number seven, the picture shows two points P and Q on the unit circle. Explain why the tangent of P and the tangent of Q is two. So remember that the tangent um, of any angle is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side which when you're in your unit circle, the opposite of an angle is the Y value over the adjacent side, which is the X value. So when we're looking at this um, line here, if you look, here's the line, it goes all the way through here. So if we look at this line, the slope of this line is two. So we can see that the slope of this line from here Okay, up to here, so two points on the line, is 2 over 1. So if we just reduce this, um, that will stay. The slope of the blue line is 2 over 1 the whole way around. Okay, now this height won't be 2 and 1, but it'll reduce to 2 over 1 as a fraction or as a slope of rise over run. So the slope of this line is two over one or the rise over run is equal to two over one. So then by extension, y over x is always equal to two over one on that blue line. And we can see that q is on the blue line and p is on the blue line. So then the tangent of p would equal that slope and the tangent of q, whoops, of Q would equal that slope as well.